Sometimes we have to ask ourselves, what's using my life? One of the things that we know about life is that it is always changing. Sometimes you're up, sometimes you're down. Sometimes things go real well, and sometimes they don't. Sometimes you're happy, and sometimes you're sad. Now that's that thing called life. And when we begin to understand and know that, accepting that reality that, that we will never ever have things just on an even kill all the time, that you're going to have some ups and you're going to have some downs. But during those down moments, that's where the growth takes place. That's where the work is. Anybody can feel good when they have their health, their bills are paid, they have happy relationships, the children are acting normal. Anybody can be positive then. Anybody can have a larger vision then. Anybody can have faith under those kinds of circumstances. See, but the real challenge, the real challenge of growth, mentally, emotionally, and spiritually, comes when you get knocked down. How you handle it, that's where the growth takes place. What has brought you to this point? When did you learn from it? Are you learning anything or are you doing it over and over and over again? Are you going through it or are you growing through it? Are you bigger and better because of it? Things are going to happen to you. And the most important thing to do is to harness your will and let it go. I'm in control here. I'm not going to let this get me down. I'm not going to let this destroy me. I'm coming back. And I'll be stronger and better because of it. You have got to make a declaration that this is what you stand for. You're standing up for your dreams. You're standing up for peace of mind. You're standing up for health. You want it. And you're going to go all out to have it. Yes. I'm going to turn this situation around. I'm not going to sit back and, and moan and cry over what happened and what went wrong and who did what. I'm going to do something about this situation. Expect things to get better for you because they are. See, life is cyclic. Whatever experience you're having right now, it has not come to stay. It has come to pass. Imagine you're on your deathbed, and standing around your deathbed are the ghosts representing your unfulfilled potential. The ghost of the ideas you never acted on. The ghost of the talents you didn't use. And they're standing around your bed, angry, disappointed, and upset. They say, we, we came to you because you could have brought us to life, they say. And now we have to go to the grave together. So I ask you today, how many ghosts are going to be around your bed when your time comes? In order to do something you've never done, you must be born again. But most people are living like they're living because of the fact that they don't believe they can have any more than what they now have. They accept the reality that they have been given. You have something special. You have talents and abilities in you that you don't even know. First step is you got to live your calling. You got to decide what is it you love. Don't listen to the naysayers. I mean, how many times have you heard that you can't do this, you can't do that, and it has never been done before? Yes, you can. I want you to think about this goal that you want. I want you to envision it and see it in your mind's eye. And every day say to yourself, I can do this. I can make this happen. There is no passion to be found playing small and settling for a life that's less 
than the one you're capable of living. You will fail at some point in your life. Accept it. You will lose. You will embarrass yourself. You will suck at something. There's no doubt about it. I don't want you to be the next Oprah. I don't want you to be the next Obama. I don't even want you to be the next me. I want you to be you. But you're going to have some ups and you're going to have some downs. You're going to have people to do things to you. Things are going to happen to you. And the most important thing to do is to harness your will and let it go. If you don't fail, you're not even trying. Every failed experiment is one step closer to success. You have to trust in something, your gut, destiny, life, karma, whatever, because believing that the dots will connect down the road will give you the confidence to follow your heart even when it leads you off the well-worn path, and that will make all the difference. You've got genius in you. You have some special stuff in you. You were born to win. You want it. And you're going to go all out to have it. If it's hard, then do it hard. You've got to be willing to do the things that they others won't do in order to have the things tomorrow others won't have. Do you know how powerful you are? Whatever your gift is, what are you going to do with what you have? Your freedom and happiness has been restricted by a story that you never double checked. You never double checked the narrative with your, you never cross referenced the narrative that you were fed. You believed it hook, line, and sinker, and now your happiness will be diminished. People in general do not want their belief systems to be challenged. They want to hear things that pump them up. They don't want to be cons consistently challenged. So the reason why people, what people often do is they use groupthink in order to save themselves mental energy. And then they parrot back the opinions of the herd because they think that that gets them approval and safety. Literally, the mental prisons that you're initially fed that stifle you down, and then now you are the jailer. You are your own worst enemy. These guys that are like, I don't agree, it's ever good, 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 the best. He literally is his own jailer now. He is hurting himself now. It's so crazy. Most people, however, have a very groupthink strategy. The problem with a groupthink strategy is that you have the sheep and the wolves. The wolves eat the sheep. Everybody is willing to pay to be told what to think and what to do. Basically, the wolves are people that are not mentally lazy. If you want to be a wolf in life, you have to be okay with a high degree of uncertainty, ambiguity, Realize that you are in a cultural hypnosis. So the biggest thing that I've realized over the past year, I'd say, because I like to share my biggest epiphanies when I come to summit of the year, is the severity of natural uh, mass cultural hypnosis. It is a lot more severe than I ever really understood. We're all influenced by our social environment. We are not isolated little fucking islands. We are permeable membranes. So what I realize over time, you have to be very controlling of what you choose to let into your headspace, okay? Massively controlling. You have to be aware of what's getting in. Don't let in shit that you have thought through and that you don't want to let in. Okay? So if you want to move ahead in the world, 
You have to really pull yourself out of easy thinking. Don't look for the easy truths. Some truths are easy. Keep things simple, but never simpler than they actually are. Make it as simple as it can be, but don't make it simpler than it actually is. You have to choose your influences very carefully and choose what am I putting into myself very carefully. Then what you have to do is you have to have a very strong personal boundary of anything that's not moving you in that direction. But to do this, I think, to make it practical and to pull it off, you have to have a reason why you're doing it. There has to be something that motivates you to do that. With increased purpose, it's like your gravity increases and it increases your personal boundaries. Most people's behavior day to day, if you think about it, is coping behavior. They're just trying to cope. They don't feel great and they're just trying to fucking cope. Assume failure. Assume that you will be a failure. Assume that failure is the default unless you fix it. You have to be on top of your shit. Every minute that goes by, if you're on a life mission, you're going by, it's not happening, you're losing time. This is not up for debate, you're losing time. If you'd use the time better, you could have done more. If you use the time worse, you could do less. Think of a mission. Think of the fucking higher universal values that you would have to embody to accomplish it and just spend your time moving in that direction. Think bigger, bigger thoughts. What I realized what was satisfying to me was finding higher values and the struggle and journey of embodying those values. That's where I really found happiness. We have our dreams, our passion for a reason. It is not by chance. Whatever vision you have for yourself, somehow you've been gifted with this inner voice, this spectacular talent and potential that's never ending. And most people never live up to that. Understand that what has been given to you has been given to you particularly, specifically for a reason. You're one of a kind. You're something special. Don't cheat yourself out of that by living an average life. Life is hard. Yeah, that's right. You're going to experience some struggles, some pain, some hardships. But it's not about what happens to you. Because these things, whether you believe it or not, happen to everyone. But it's the way that you respond to these things that really makes you stand out. That's what makes a difference. You will never be able to control everyone and everything around you. You can't always choose what happens, but you can choose what you're going to do about it. That's fully and entirely up to you. Most people will make excuses, but if you want things to go your way, take full responsibility. Because that means you have the power to change it. It's up to you to make a difference. The power is in your hands. Now think about that for a second. That's all the power you need, the ability to impact and change anything. It's up to you. You have to switch out of that pity victim mentality and never look back. What gives your life meaning? What gives it purpose? What drives you? The voices in your head telling you that you are not good enough? that you can't make it happen, as well as maybe even the people around you saying those things, it has to stop, it has to end. That's not good enough. That's not good enough. You have to do better than that. You have to step up with some power. Make a statement to the universe. I am capable. I am powerful. I not only can, but I will make it happen. Only you can claim your own power. Nobody else can do that for you. You're designing your own future right now. You're crafting. You're creating right now. You're making your own experience. There are some abilities, some talents, some gifts you have that absolutely no one else can tap into except for you.
Fighting change is a losing battle. Freedom and happiness are found in the flexibility and ease with which we move through change. And obviously, I can't stress how important this is. So I want to start off by bringing your attention to a natural human trait, and that is that we love comfort. Human beings are creatures of habits. You know, we love comfort, predictability, stability, you know, just things remaining the same, just being able to relax, you know, like no surprises. You know, we love that, and we love it too much. You know, what the fuck's wrong with loving comfort too much? And therein lies the problem and the source of a lot of frustration and unhappiness for a lot of people. Now, why is that? You need things like discomfort, uh, unpredictability, you know, things to be changing in order to grow and become more anti-fragile uh, of a person. The main reason is simply the fact that in this world, nothing is stable. Okay, everything is constantly changing. And that's the natural course of life. As human beings, you know, we're creatures of habit. You know, we like comfort. We like, you know, things to remain the same. We really, really hate change. You know, like anything that's, you know, chaotic or you know, the unknown. And if you look at your life situation now, okay, like just really think of it, like where you are in life, and you go back a year or two, I doubt that it was very different. Okay, unless you've already been taking tons of action. It's probably the same, okay, or very similar. It's like you might have a new, you know, promotion. You might be a little ahead, say, if you're going to university or something. But, you know, you're probably the same person, okay? It's like you haven't changed much, and it's just going to keep going that way, okay? It's not going to get better. And what I want to address today are a series of excuses that I hear all the time. I'm not in the mood. You know, I just don't... I just don't feel like it. I don't have the energy. You know, I'm just, I'm tired. I'm, very, I'm just tired. You know what? I think I need to read more theory about this, you know, before kind of like mastering this, you know, achieving success. And basically, all these excuses here, you know, are just blaming the current circumstances. You know, it's like, I would do it, but the current circumstances really don't allow it. So it's not really my fault. It's just that, you know, the circumstances suck. Okay, and this frame of mind here, okay, this is what you truly believe, and you're just blaming the circumstances, uh, is going to hold you back, and ultimately, trust me when you hear me say this, you will never achieve any fucking type of success. So there are a couple things you need to realize, you know, when it comes to your circumstances. The first one is that your circumstances are rarely going to get any better. Okay, and this is very important to understand. It's not going to get better, okay? And in reality, is it's often going to get worse, okay? If your excuse is, you know what? I'm a little tired. Uh, getting older, it's not going to get better. You're going to get even more tired, okay? If you don't have time now, the older you get, the more responsibility you're taking on. Uh, you're going to have a lot less time too. So remember this: circumstances rarely get any better. And oftentimes they just get worse. And with a lot of these excuses as well, realize that it's the other way around. Okay, like if you're waiting to feel motivated, you know, like you know what, I'm just not in the mood, and I'm gonna wait till I feel in the mood, you know, to take action. Realize that that there is rarely going to happen, since this here is a new, you know, habit, a new skill set. Uh, you're not really gonna feel motivated. Why? Because as we discussed before, human beings are creatures of habit. Okay. Uh, you're used to your little routine. This here is something new, something that creates a little bit more chaos. Your emotions are going to be like, you know what? You're going to feel motivated to create some chaos in your life. You're going to be like, ah, no, no, it's just my emotions are just not aligned. They're just not there yet. Okay, uh, that there is normal. So it's the other way around. Okay? Don't wait to feel motivated. Just force yourself to take on this new habit. You know, going out, taking action, and by doing that. Okay, it's going to start feeling a little bit more comfortable, and the motivation is going to start, you know, coming after that. Okay, it's like you take action, the motivation comes. It's not I'm waiting to feel motivated to take action. 
Don't depend on your circumstances. Don't wait for them to change or miraculously get better. Uh, don't wait till you're, you know, you're in the mood. It's just basically start fucking now. Okay, start now, and all those things will ultimately just take care of themselves. Try to find a nice middle ground where instead of focusing all your energy on maintaining things, to, you know, as they are, focus it instead on navigating through that change in a way that's beneficial to you. Remember, indirect control. You know, focus on the bigger picture in fighting change is a losing battle. Freedom and happiness are found in the flexibility and ease with which we move through change. Work on that. I do not believe that any of us have dreams that were not given to us for the purpose of accomplishing those particular dreams. If you feel you have something to give, if you feel that your particular talent is worth developing, is worth caring for, then there's nothing you can't achieve. So I applaud you for your dreaming for your running toward your dream, I applaud you for believing in yourself because that's what life is about, stretching and challenging, looking for ways that you can begin to improve yourself. Not only is it possible for you to have your dream, but it's necessary, it's necessary that you go for what is yours in the universe. Logical, practical thinking says you can't do it today. But if you want to produce unreasonable results in your life, like living your dream and taking charge of your destiny, you've got to be an unreasonable person. When you grow up, you tend to get told that the world is the way it is. Your life is just to live your life inside the world, try not to bash into the walls too much. That's a very limited life. Life can be much broader once you discover one simple fact. Everything around you that you call life was made up by people that were no smarter than you. Once you learn that, you'll never be the same again. If it's hard, why do people do it? Why do they do it? People who climb mountains. Why would a Nelson Mandela give up 26 years of his life? Why do people do that? Even though it's hard, it's worth it. It's worth it. The people who go after this stuff, what makes it worth it? It's got to be your passion. You gotta love it, it's gotta be what you are supposed to do. You do what it is you're supposed to. You're supposed to build something, you're supposed to create something. I don't know how to do it, learn. Let me share something with you. History is being read, but it's also being written by people with imagination. Our deepest fear is not that we are inadequate. Our deepest fear is that we are powerful beyond measure. It is our light, not our darkness, that most frightens us. No matter how bad it is, or how bad it gets, I'm going to make it. Live your life with passion with some dry man is the master of thought the molder of character and the maker and shaper of condition environment and destiny most men fail not through lack of education or agreeable personal qualities but from lack of dogged determination, from lack of dauntless will. Situations 
Even dramatic situations like bankruptcy, divorce, death, and economic recession cannot directly cause a feeling of any kind until the brain interprets and creates a story about said situation. Sadness, depression, frustration, upset, and anxiety can only be produced by seeing a situation and then producing an interpretation of it and then believing that interpretation. So therefore, you and I can only be overwhelmed by our thoughts about something, never the thing itself. Usually, what we most fear doing is what we most need to do. That phone call, that conversation, whatever the action might be, it is fear of unknown outcomes that prevents us from doing what we need to do. Define the worst case, accept it, and do it. I'll repeat something you might consider tattooing on your forehead. What we fear doing most is usually what we most need to do. I don't get lucky. I make my own luck. Every journey ends, but we go on. The world turns and we turn with it. Plans disappear. Dreams take over. Here's the big challenge of life. You can have more than you've got because you can become more than you are. And of course, the other side of the coin reads, unless you change how you are, you'll always have what you got. Success is something you attract, not something you pursue. Success is looking for a good place to stay. So instead of going after it, you work on yourself, personal development. See, one of the challenges that we have in our lives is we don't realize that the process of training ourselves, the process of conditioning ourselves actually feels incredible once you get that initial momentum. If you want lasting change, you've got to give up this idea of trying something. You get to decide you're going to commit to mastery. See, most people don't get out in the arena of life because they don't want to fight. Most people don't get out there because they don't want to get knocked down. They don't want to be dropped to their knees. But see, you're going to be dropped whether you're on the field or whether or not you're sitting on the sidelines. You're going to be dropped. Get knocked down so you can learn how to fight, so you can hold your position. The last 6,000 years reads like this. Opportunity mixed with difficulty. That's how it reads. It isn't going to change. You must learn to handle the nights. They come right after days. You must learn to handle difficulty. It comes right after opportunity. You must learn to handle recessions. They always follow progressions. Don't wish it was easier. Wish you were better. Clarity is power. The more clear you are about exactly what it is you want, the more your brain knows how to get there. Your reasons will drive you. When you have doubt, when your faith becomes weak, your reasons will fortify your faith. When you have an inner conversation, say, no, don't do that. Your reasons will become your rod and your staff to comfort you, to take you through those challenging moments. Life is this. I like this. which has been given you to do and you spend a lot of time going around trying to convince other people or trying to get their approval 
What will happen is that you will lose your nerve. And other people will convince you that what you're doing doesn't have any value. And you'll give up on your dream. We go through life trying to seek security and not coming outside of our comfort zone. And we take most of our stuff with us to the grave. In life, you either hit a day and you're gone today. And I'm saying that the fact that you're still here, that you're still breathing, you've got some more work, and you owe it to yourself. You owe it to yourself. So when you get up in the morning, that you can look yourself in the face and say, hey, I'm living my life on my terms. See, if you don't decide to act on your dream, if you don't decide to make a decision to live your life, if you don't decide to step into your fears, if you don't decide to say yes to your life, it will never work for you. Many of us never realize our greatness because we become sidetracked by secondary activity. We spread ourselves too thin, don't know how to say no, and we find ourselves doing all kinds of things and never ever have time to do those things that we need to do to work on ourselves. And then there goes a second, there goes another second, there goes another second, and we can't stop and hold time. And before you know it, you wake up one day and you're behind in your dreams and your bills. Ask your question, how much time do you have left? How much time do you have left? Decide that you're going to take some time to work on you, that you deserve that from yourself, that your life deserves. It's very important. You owe that to yourself. One idea can change your life. One idea can turn your life around. And as you convince you, as you sell yourself, every day, every day, every day, something happens for you. It will enable you to transcend yourself, wherever you are, whatever you're doing, do it with everything that you have. Develop the habit of giving more than what you're paid for. If there's something that you want and you're hungry for it, you've got to do whatever is necessary until. And when you give the best you can and that's not enough, you must do what is required. When you're hungry, you don't care about the facts. You don't care about the odds. When you step into your fears and continue to push yourself, to go on. You begin to see things that have been staring there looking you in the face saying, I can't believe this has been here all this time. It's supposed to be difficult. If it wasn't difficult, then there'd be no growth. There would be no resistance. There'd be nothing to force you to grow stronger with. And that's why I say the most important reason, the most important thing, the most important gift that you receive by taking action, it's you growing stronger and becoming a stronger version of yourself through the challenges, through the resistance, and because it's hard. And don't give up on yourself. Don't throw the towel in so quickly. Many people give up on the one yard line. I want you to get to a place in your life that every mistake you make, every setback you get, Right, every obstacle that you don't that, that, that you don't overcome, every barrier you can't climb. I don't want you to give up, but I want you to fail forward. Every mistake you make has to be another stepping stone, another building block. And you've got to learn how to tune out the critics outside and the critic inside. And since I'm going to do this, I'm going to harness my will, and I'm not going to let anything stop me. I deserve this. See, the last chapter to your life has not been written yet, and it doesn't matter about what happened yesterday. We don't give up. We don't surrender. We don't quit. We see differently. Our perspective is different, and because our perspective is different, our outcomes are different. Our rewards are different.
Embrace the stress. Learning is only there when, you ha when you're in a situation that is super, super stressful for you. So I have to put myself continuously in the situations where I'm in, under high pressure because only then I will learn a lot. And the fact that I learn is good, which means high stress is good as well. The, the reframe that I always have is the moment I feel resistance, where I'm like coming up with excuses, I know I, I have to do it. It's a rule of mine. The moment I feel that resistance, the rule kicks in, max there is resistance, now you gotta do it. And if I hesitate, even more reason to do it. Even if I fuck it up, I learn a lot more because it's a high pressure situation. And I, even if I don't feel ready, I remember I didn't feel ready at first either, but I still made it. I'm alive. I'm alive. It's all still there. My heart's still pumping. I'm not dead. Don't think yourself like, oh, when I lose, I'm less of a man. No. Is how you deal with it, how you cope with it. It is your attitude towards that. Because it's basically just your body telling you this is a situation that counts. So it's about the attitude that you have towards that. Losing gets you to the fucking top. But you have to get up again. You have to get up again. Fall down seven times, get up eight times. Fall down eight times, get up nine times. And so on and so on. You have to trust yourself and you have to trust the process that no matter what crisis is going to be thrown at you, have the knowledge that at first you will be overwhelmed and you think you can't do it, but also have the trust kick in, okay, I've dealt with other crises before, no reason why I couldn't deal with that crisis. So first of all, the thing about crisis is you never feel ready for one, otherwise it wouldn't be a crisis. You never feel ready, you always think like that's the worst crisis I've ever been in, but you will grow into that. You will grow into that role of coping with the crisis. Um, there's a lot, of, a lot of shit you have to dig through. And the cool thing is, the more crisis you find yourself in, um, the more you can cope with the next one. Trust in yourself. But the thing is, you have to accept it first. There's two ways how to deal with the crisis. You either accept it because you can't change it at the moment, or you can change it and then you do fucking change it. experience pain because you're in a situation that you can't change accept that pain fully like literally like soak the pain up and walk into the pain keep walking keep walking until there is no more pain every crisis is something good because it gives you the opportunity to grow out of that and to trust yourself more so I know it's hard and I know you seek the results that you had before but as long as you just trust the process and keep going you will eventually overcome that. It's, um, even though you might not see it in the results yet, even though it might not be manifested in the results, your learning process is there. You do pick up on little nuances that eventually will end up in uh, you getting better. Okay, run an analogy. Don't stop. Just keep going and trust the process. Get back that excitement of the beginning. Tap, pat yourself on the shoulder. This is awesome. Stop comparing yourself. Shift your focus from comparing to results to comparing the learning process. Am I learning more today? Yes or no? You got to keep going. You have to. Don't stop. Just don't fucking stop. Don't fucking stop doing it. Dude, you have to step your shit up. You have to be active now. Instead of bursting your energy of anger just out there uncontrollably, you got to collect that anger together to one very focused on a gray onto something positive. Okay. Anger is not something bad, anger is something healthy. Use it as leverage. Oh, I'm angry at myself because again, I'm frustrated, I can't get myself out of the situation. This has to stop now, I'm gonna study even harder, I'm gonna run even faster, I'm gonna try even harder to get that girl. I'm gonna use it as leverage because my anger is energy and that energy can be used for something useful. Don't interpret a stressful situation as something you have to get out of yourself, no. See it as a positive challenge that you can overcome eventually. It's, it goes along with the notion of trusting yourself, trusting your capabilities, and that is what you should do. Okay? Anger is something good. Use it as leverage and use it for something purposeful. Bundle it up together and rock it. It's like you don't take life too seriously, but you also have to take your progress seriously. Because if you do not, then you'll wake up in a couple years from now and you'll be just where you are now. 
just exactly where you are now. So your life will blow by faster than you realize. It's super, super fast. Right now, a year passes for me feels like a week. That's how it feels. Years will blow by. Four years from now will seem like nothing, dude. And you'll either be a pimp, chode. Dude, anything that of real significance takes years to cultivate. But what's cool is that the years blow by fast and you can get what you want actually pretty fast. Our minds are filled with, again, we're contrasting ourselves against people, comparing ourselves, rather than just getting into momentum. You shouldn't be thinking. People are thinking too fucking much. Or they're comparing themselves to other people as if by comparing yourself, that matters. What does it matter? Mental late, they're mentally fucking lazy. People, people, Tony Robinson, people major in minor things. Turn off the fucking TV. It's a god, news and shit is a goddamn fucking tabloid. What help has any of that shit given you? Dude, like, you have to train your mind to be like, okay, new task, look at the task, focus on it. I work fucking hard, dude. Everybody that I see working is, in my mind, fucking pussies. Holy shit, people don't work, dude. It's so crazy how little people work. People go to work for eight hours, it's like two hours. What are they doing? I watch people work, I'm like, what is he doing? Why is he here? Go run in the field, motherfucker. Don't just sit here. Go run, play. Don't sit here in this weird gray zone between working and not working. What are you doing? I'm very, very I'm self-hypnotized with two things. Hard fucking work and being fucking funny. So because of that, work ethic is built, right? So it's like a, it's like a, like an endurance race. So the thing is like, you, you build that up. That's why like, I love these guys that are like, economy is getting bad, man. Oh shit, I'm like, no, you're a pussy. You're, you want to keep being a pussy and then, and then have easy money given to you. People just don't fucking work. They have no work ethic. I've, I never meet anybody with fucking work ethic. Like rarely, when I do, I'm like, yo, high five, dude. And then we're like instantly friends because almost nobody has a work ethic. It's so crazy. I'm having as much fun working as I do fucking around. You guys see that? There's no difference to me. I don't care if I'm working, if I'm having fun. Recreation is overrated. People think you need to be having recreation to have fun. You don't. I can't have fun working. Why not? It's your attitude towards the work. Now, sometimes work can be tough. I get that. It can be miserable. It can be soul sucking. But, but in general, you, it's mental strength. You choose to have fun because you're, you have no mental muscle that chooses to have fun at that point. It's like, what could be possible after 10 years? Like start thinking like that. Like what could I look like in 10 years? What could I look like in 20 years? What could I look like in 30 years? If you're 20, you should be thinking, what could you look like in 30 years? What could your life look like? And I realized that I need to surround myself with winners. I need to surround myself with people that are killing it and crushing me at life. I need to surround myself with people that hold me to higher standards. I need to read books and control my influences. And I'm very careful about what influences I allow into myself. Very, very selective about what people I, around, I allow around myself. If people are acting up, I get rid of them. You gotta do it, man. The iron gate, baby. Personal boundaries, <laughs> shut. The iron gate. Personal boundaries, any bullshit, <laughs> shut. And as you grow, you'll have to do that to more and more things. See, growing is about saying no to more and more things. You say no to bullshit little tabloid pretending to be media. You say no to friends that are negative. You say no to procrastination. You say no to approach anxiety of a woman. You say no to holding yourself to lower standards. You just say fucking no. You gotta dig down deep to gut it out, keep on going again and again and again until you make it happen because you know that it's possible. Now, what do you do during the hard times, Les? Here's what you must do. Number one is you must have faith. Paul said you must have the faith to call forth those things that be not as though they were. Judge not according to appearances. Don't judge your circumstances and the possibilities for your future based upon what you have now and because of what's going on now. No, 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 no. 
That's not the real reality there. What you're going through, if you're going through some hard times, it has not come to stay, it has come to pass. It's all right. Now, second thing is, repeat this after me. Something you should affirm to yourself every day. Repeat this, please. No matter how bad it is, or how bad it gets, I'm going to make it. Say that to yourself every day. As I used to say to myself, I, when I would get up in the Penobscot building and I had to go into the bathroom and, and bathe in the bathroom sink, I had written on the mirror that I put up, they just paste up and I read, no matter how bad it is or how bad it gets, I'm going to make it. So you've got to have faith, you talk to yourself, you say that affirmation. The next step is, you must have patience and engage in consistent action. Patience and engage in consistent action. See, everything does not always happen, ladies and gentlemen, when we want it to happen. It doesn't happen quickly. So in that process, they have something in the Far East called the Chinese bamboo tree. The Chinese bamboo tree, every day it has to be watered and fertilized. It's a very hard nut, nut and, and it takes five years of, of watering and fertilization every day, according to American Geographic, before it breaks through the ground. At any time, if the watering process and the nurturing and the fertilization process is stopped, the Chinese bamboo tree will die in the ground. Now, once it breaks through in that fifth year, then in six weeks it grows 90 feet tall. Now, the question is, does it go 90 feet in five years or six weeks? The answer is obvious. It takes five years. That's how long it took to grow it, to build that foundation, to nurture it, to water it, to build the reputation, to build the credibility, to learn the market, to learn people, to learn yourself, to learn the system, to learn how to do it, to figure it out. That's why you must have patience and engage in consistent action. We live in a world, ladies and gentlemen, where people want instant gratification. They want it right now. They want to be a Dexter Yeager, but they're not willing to pay the price to do what it takes to get up there with the copper. Well, Brian or Judy is. They think it was easy. No, no. It's simple, but it's not easy. It's a system that if you work the system, it works if you work it. But make no mistake about it. It's hard. You are the determining factor. Here's something else. It's possible you can live your dream. It's necessary that you have goals, that you write them down, that you surround yourself with a support team, that you are creating. It's you that you must take personal responsibility to make it happen. George Bernard Shaw said, the people that make it in this world look around for the circumstances that they want and if they can't find them, they create them. It's hard. No easy is not an option. However, ladies and gentlemen, what you will discover is that it's worth it. It's worth it. I suggest to you, if you want to become diamond, write down five reasons of why it is worth it for you to become a diamond, to experience that level of achievement. What is it that will give you the drive? What is it that will ignite the courage in you to get up and come back again and again and again? How is it that you would be able, what reasons that can tap in to that deep down feeling that goes to your gut, that no matter how many times you get knocked down, that you're coming back? What is it? Write it down. Let me tell you something, ladies and gentlemen. You saw that picture up there, the lady, Mrs. Mamie Brown. I'm flying from here tomorrow morning to be with my adopted mother. She's 87 years young, thank God. And I'll be with Mama tomorrow. Every 
Mother's Day, I don't care where I am. I go home, Mother's Day, everybody know, November 6th, my mother's birthday, I'm home. And I try to go home as often as I can. When I started and left Miami pursuing my dream, because I knew that as long as you work for someone else, they are controlling your destiny. I don't want anybody signing my paycheck but me. I knew that it was going to be difficult. I knew it was going to be hard. But every time I thought about giving up, and there were times I did, because where I am, ladies and gentlemen, it's a long shot. You think being a diamond is a long shot. This is a miracle. This is a long shot. And I had people laughing at me, still less. You're talking about being a motivational speaker? You have no college training? You were labeled educable, mentally retarded? You failed twice in school? They put you back from the fifth grade into the fourth grade and you fail in the eighth grade? You've never worked for a major corporation? And you are going to become independently wealthy. Right. They laugh. They're going to laugh at you. People are going to laugh at you. But let me tell you, I, I believe in revenge like Frank Sinatra. He said the best revenge is massive success. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, when I was driving around with my mother and she saw a house, we were just looking for homes and we drove an exclusive area of Miami where the coach of the Miami Dolphins, Don Shula, lives in that area called Country Club. My mother saw this house, oh, that's what a beautiful home. And we looked at it, she said, oh boy, I, I, I would love to have something like that. One day I would feel like Mrs. Rockefeller. I said, you like that, Mom? I said, yeah. I said, oh, we just kept driving. I did not let my mother know at that time that I had it etched in my mind that I was going to do Whatever number of meetings, whatever number of contacts, whatever number of calls I had to make, whatever it took to make that become a reality. And the day that I drove to that house and, and said, Mama, you remember that house you saw? We got out the car. I said, yes. I said, I, I really know the people that live there. She said, you do? I said, yeah, let me take you in and show it to you. And then I couldn't contain myself anymore when I got around and helped her get out of the car. And I took it, I said, Mom, I gave the keys. Over 5,000 square feet. Large size Olympic pool, 12 feet deep. On a golf course, basketball court. She, I said, Mama, this, this, this is for you. And ladies and gentlemen, to, to see my mother walk around this house, this woman who only has a third grade education, never had any children of her own. And she walked around. Oh Lord, oh thank you Jesus, no, no one would have ever, ever told me this would have happened to me. She said, Leslie, she said, you know, that day when I, I went in that building and they told me this lady had these, these boys that she wanted to put up for adoption. And I told them, I said, I'll, I'll take them. And, and she said, ladies, she said, raise your hand and swear to me two things. I said, what is it? She said, swear to me you won't separate them. She said, oh no, I swear, I'll keep them together, I swear. I've never had no children, I swear, I'll keep them together. She said, swear to me, lady, that you won't ever tell them about me. She said, I'm married and I got pregnant while my husband was at war. She said, swear to me, you won't tell. She said, I swear I won't tell. She said, okay, you can have them. She said, when I came out that house and I was looking at y'all, she said, I didn't know how I was going to do it. She said, I was working at the M&M cafeteria. She said, I didn't know how I was going to raise y'all. I, ju I just knew somehow, somehow the Lord would make a way somehow. And I never thought this would happen to me. And I know, and during those moments when it's hard, not only must you have patience and engage in consistent action but you must turn to a power greater than yourself and just say Lord whatever I face today together you and I can handle it and I know some way and somehow you'll make a way for me
Every passing minute is another chance to turn it all around. Never believe a prediction that doesn't empower you. How many predictions have been thrown at you your whole life? If you believe predictions that do not empower you, you will wither away and die. Either physically die or your spirit will die as you just walk around the world like a carcass that is just following the masses. You will be given a lot of titles in your life. You will be told so many different things. You must only listen to that which empowers you. See, it's not important how long you live. What's important is how you live. The first thing I believe you got to do to turn yourself around is really take control of your mind. Or specifically, you got to feed and strengthen the mind. Guess what? You're going to make some mistakes. So the person who's never made a mistake hasn't done anything. If you're going to make some mistakes if you want to do something out here, you're going to fall flat on your face. You're going to be criticized when you come out into the arena called life. You're going to feel awkward and stupid and dumb sometimes. It goes with the territory. But it's okay. Take charge of your own life. Then walk away from the 95%. Don't go where they go. Don't do what they do. Don't talk like they talk. Develop you a whole new language. Don't use their vocabulary. Don't use their excuses. Once you look back on it, you will never turn back. You'll never go back to the old ways and the old language and the old neglect. Never. Spend each day trying to be a little wiser than you were when you woke up. Discharge your duties faithfully and well. Step by step you get ahead, but not necessarily in fast spurts. But you build discipline by preparing for fast spurts. Slug it out one inch at a time, day by day. And at the end of the day, if you live long enough, most people get what they deserve. The sheer volume of time wasting that most people have is out of fucking control, okay? Out of control. And the reason why is because human beings are the most rationalizing fucking creature ever invented, okay? There has never been a bigger rationalizing species in the history of the world than a human being. You can just live for, ins for, for like short-term temporal pleasure, but here's the problem with that. Things are good for a sec, and then they're not and then things feel good for a sec, and then they're not, right? You smoke the joint, you're high, and then you're not. You know what I'm saying, right? You're watching fucking American Idol, and then you're not. So how you get, so your happiness is too shaky. Life is difficult from people that come from a fucked up background. I think the same shit, but you can overcome it. So the main difference that I have is I realistically assess it and I'm in non-resistance to it. I'm at a point where I wouldn't want it any other way. Pretty much then what you do is you limit your emotions down to only the ones that will help you, okay? So if you have an emotion that doesn't help you, you just get rid of it, it's gone. What I feel like what happens is like there's these forces that push down upon us, they push down upon our psyche, and when we can rise above those, that's like the most powerful experience of life. I think a lot of people sense that, that beneath all this bullshit, there's these deeper values that are more powerful than any of the sur surface level bullshit and that resonate with people more powerfully. You're grounded in your own energy. You're on your purpose. So you're going to do what you're going to do. It's like this train's moving. And then you're free. Like you're very uninhibited. 
the last thing on this earth that you're feeling when you've conquered your fears and conquered your obstacles is like, what's that guy look like? Does he have a nicer nose than me? Does he have better calves? <laughs> this is insane. If I'm gonna get what I want, I've gotta just do it. Just shut the fuck up and let's fucking get on with it. So when I go in there, I just do it, all right? I shut the fuck up and I do it. If you're gonna fucking do it, then fucking do it. Let's get on with it. When, you, when you're at the top of a building and you're walking along a ledge, you can sit there going, what if I fall, what if I fall, what if I fall? Or you can say, put one foot here, put one foot here, put one foot here, put one foot here. What I would love you to do is to become a man on your purpose. Become so immersed in the movement of your life that you don't have time to let these mind viruses invade your head and spend all this time entertaining them. Get rid of it. Get rid of your mending. Enjoy your life. Assume that you chose this life. When you do that, you're going to open up a whole new range of possibilities to yourself. You're going to start enjoying walking your own journey, and you're going to let the chips fall where they may. When you're happy with the person who you become, that is always the payoff. All you have to do is just go to the Ian Center, walk around, feel sorry for yourself, but when you go home, you can lose yourself in infinite hours of torrented TV shows and torrented movies. And when you're on your deathbed, if you look back to all your friendships, they're all actors. They're all fictional little characters. But you don't care because you had a lot of friends. And that's a lot of people nowadays. They go through their shitty job. They feel like they don't have much of a purpose. They're not very significant in life. It's like, oh man, I just need to feel sorry for myself a few more minutes before I pass out. And then I'll dream that I'm in Game of Thrones and my life will be better again. The more you stay at home, the more you stay in that cycle, the more, let's just say, the harder it is to snap out of that cycle. Okay, you slowly start losing willpower, okay, and then what, what happens? You know you have zero willpower, okay, and then you're like, man, I wish I could snap out, but I know that even if I tried, I just don't have the willpower to do it. Now, if that's you, and you want to get good at this, as I mentioned before, something fun is not going to snap you out of that. If you have zero willpower, and your life is a complete piece of shit, something fun, if you want to change that shit, life or death, go all out. In terms of motivation, you better be fucking serious. Good enough, not good enough, okay? Something fun, not good enough. Life or fucking death. You always know deep down inside you could be better. So you really have to move from failure consciousness to success consciousness, okay? Now, what does that mean? Basically, focus also on the positive. You know, find ways to give yourself props. Ask yourself, you know, what did I do well? You know, I went in with good intentions, you know? Um, I did this well, I did this well. Like, just start making that fucking shift. You're gonna have to get addicted to just slow progress, building shit the right way. It's like little increments of 1%, 1%, 1%. And then you look back, say three to six months, you actually see the change. Get addicted to that. Be happy with that. Life is a journey, not a destination. Okay, the fun here is in the process. The fun is getting a little bit better, a little bit better, a little bit better. Do it like a video game. Once you realize, okay, as we've previously discussed, you're in this for life. Okay, it's not a little sprint where you try to get good fast. It's a fucking marathon. It's important to understand that, but it's also important to prepare for it. Okay, both mentally and physically. Just keep moving forward. Okay, don't stop to celebrate the good. Don't stop to celebrate the bad. You don't have time to celebrate. Just keep fucking going. So on the mental preparation side of things, uh, this really means sitting down. You know, you're watching this video. Sit down after watching this video and ask yourself these questions. Okay, are you really willing to commit to this? You know, the rest of your life. Like, is this something like a path you're going to walk? You know, till the day that you die. Because this is not an easy path. Okay, the easy path is uh, just slacking off and doing nothing. Now, it's not the path that's going to bring you happiness and fulfillment, but that's the easy way out. Okay, this shit here means holding yourself at a high standard. It means continuously putting yourself in situations that make you grow, situations that are not necessarily comfortable. It's emotionally traumatizing. You're going to have to go through a lot of humiliation, okay, stuff, you know, moments where you embarrass yourself. You're going to have to tolerate a lot of social pressure. You're going to have to let your ego just leave it at the door you know let go of that little ego just really put yourself you know on the line 
Uh, you're gonna have to go through failure, rejection. There's a lot of bullshit involved. And you really have to sit down now and ask yourself, like, am I gonna do this? Am I really to, ready to commit to this? Am I gonna hold myself at a high standard? Am I going to be the best that I can be? Am I ready for all the bullshit that I'm going to encounter? Am I ready to just let go of comfort? Let go of stability? Let go of predictability? Am I ready to possibly cut off some friends? You know, let go of my reputation? To what degree are you prepared? I would ask yourself, to what degree are you prepared to dedicate yourself to this task? You have to take it seriously. How bad do you want it? Do you have enough leverage? Like, is this something that you just can't live without doing, without achieving? What are you willing to give in return? Okay, nothing comes for free. This is not an easy task. What are you willing to give in return? Fuck your ego. Fuck your current identity. Let that go. You know, fuck comfort. You gotta be a little crazy to do this all the way. You gotta fuck comfort. You know, uh, emotional trauma. Like, what are you willing to give? Okay, sit down, ask yourself these questions. I ask myself these questions every single fucking day. You know, when I wake up, I'm like, okay. Just remind yourself, again, it's a marathon. You've got to be prepared. So this one's a quite interesting topic. It's about change. The powerful path to self-fulfillment. A really, really important question that I asked myself when I started my journey was... Where does change actually begin? Does it begin with the actions I take? Does it begin with results? Does it begin with other people noticing that I changed, that I, that I got somewhere, that I have results or whatever? And if you want to change, this change begins by the way you communicate with yourself. So by the way we communicate, we create reality. These are four phases of changing. Okay, number one is, I should change. And the really, really sad part about this is, 99.9% .9 of people who are living on this planet are being stuck in the first stage. There's literally people who will spend the rest of their life doing nothing more but saying, I should change. And after 80, 90 years, they're dying thinking of, I should have changed. And that's really sad. So how can you overcome that? It starts in your communication. It starts in your thoughts. You want to get to the next stage, which is, I can change. Once you realize the fact that change is possible, it will open up a lot more possibilities. Okay, stage two, I can change. Now what, what gets you to the next level? You take action, aka I will change. Okay, so the only thing that you need in order to get from step two, I can change, to step three, I will change, is taking action. So you realize you're able to change, now is the time to get off your lazy ass and take action. Now is the time to go out and pimp. Now is the time to get butt hurt, to get rejected. Now is the time to hit the gym. Now is the time to read everything about finance. Okay, take action. I will change. Feels good, sounds good, huh? I will change. It's not like, well, I should change at some point. No, it's like, I will change. And the cool thing is, feels good, feels awesome, taking action. And the last thing we actually arrived is, I am change. And that's literally one of the best feelings in the world. Back in the days, fucking thousands of years ago, we were not taught to be passive. We were taught to be active, to go on hunt, to get food, to survive. We're literally one of the first generations that is being taught how to be passive and how to how to cope with shit. That's like our default state for humanity is, I mean, I guess because we're we're having all this luxus and like all these, you know, we don't have to hunt for our food. We don't, we, we 
can pretty much tell that if we go outside, there's no fucking tiger killing us. So we have all the security, and I think that's why we're so passive. And that's why we brought up waiting for changes. Fuck your passivity. Fuck it. In order to change, you have to be active. You will never bring change if you're passive. And that's what literally everyone does. We're all waiting for change. We're like sitting there like, maybe someone comes across and helps me. I said you have to be active in order to change. It's not over until you win. Stop being passive. It's not over until you win. It doesn't work, what will fix it? Taking action. It's not easy. I'm not saying it's easy, but I'm saying it's possible. That's all you need. And the crazy thing is, like I mentioned earlier, most of us will keep waiting for changes and we're gonna die. And most of you guys, that's the truth, okay? That's the very uncomfortable truth. Most of you guys will come home and will not change. You'll come home with all the knowledge today, maybe some motivation, but you will not change because in your headspace, you're thinking, well, change will come upon myself. But the only thing that will bring change upon yourself is you yourself, okay? By taking action. You can't wait for change. You have to induce the change yourself. It can show you the right path or the right door you can walk through, but you have to be on that path yourself with your fucking feet. You have to walk through that door yourself. The only one who brings change upon yourself is you, no one else. And yes, it feels uncomfortable, and yes, you'll have a lot of setbacks, and a lot of rejections that it will hurt, but if you endure that pain, you can make it, and it will feel awesome. Let me tell you that, it feels fucking awesome. What do you want? It's as simple as that, do you happiness? The key to an amazing life full of adventures, of fulfilling your dreams is what do you want? It's not over until I win. You know, we've all had dreams and goals. We had at one stage in our life, but very few people ever start to live those because obviously obstacles come up. Somebody stabs you in the back. Something doesn't work out. And the frustration for most people becomes overwhelming. But then there's also just the fear. There's the fear of failure. There's the fear of getting your hopes up again. And, you know, you have to get your hopes up. You're going to be disappointed so often in life, but disappointment can be turned into drive or disappointment can destroy you. Everybody's afraid at some level that they're not enough in some context. Not smart enough, not pretty enough, not strong enough, not rich enough, not funny enough. And you may not be feeling that right now in your life, but we all feel that. People tell me I've tried everything. I say, name the things you've tried. Well, I've tried millions of things. Name them. Well, tens of thousands. Name them. Well, thousands. Name them. Well, these three things that don't work, I keep doing. What's an area of your life right now that you really want to improve? What's an area that's important to improve? If your body's great, how about your career? If career's great, how about your relationships? intimate one especially, or your kids, or your relationship with your creator, your spiritual side of your life, or is it your finances? Doing affirmations is not going to change your life. You've got to go see where the weeds are and pull them out. My point is simple. You've got to see what the problem is, but you can't make it so horrific that you just give up. Who you spend time with is who you become. Uh, and getting yourself in proximity with people that are succeeding, even if you have to work for free for somebody, getting the environment around them, it rubs off on you. You begin to think like they think. You begin to see what the opportunities are. Our bodies are a reflection of our physical standards. They are not a reflection of our desires. Many, most people have a desire for more energy or a better body or a stronger body or a more fit body. We don't get our goals, we get our musts. Your income right now is a result of your standards as well. It's not the industry and it's not the economy. Evaluate where you are. Look at it. Assess yourself. Assess yourself and assess the situation. What brought you there? What has brought you to this point? 
What did you learn from it? Are you learning anything or are you doing it over and over and over again? Somebody said that insanity is doing the same thing in the same way, expecting a different outcome. Don't let this year be like last. And if last year was great, still don't let it be that way. Raise the standard. If your life is perfect and extraordinary, you darn well know you're not going to be happy unless you keep making it better. That's what makes us feel alive. It's not what we get that makes us happy. It's who we become and what we're able to give because we've become more. If you want to begin to move, you've got to clear your mind of all the unnecessary luggage and baggage that's weighing us down. You're going to have people to do things to you. Things are going to happen to you. And the most important thing to do is to harness your will and let it go and move so you can grow, so you can get on with your life. It doesn't matter about what happens to you. What matters is, what are you going to do about it? If there's anything that will shift your life, that will get you to thrive in a difficult situation, is take some massive action. Try something else. Change it, try it, move it. Progress equals happiness. If you can start to make progress, if you can get yourself going, even if it's not perfect, if it doesn't work, you know what to do. Just change your approach. If that doesn't work, change your approach. So often in life, people don't begin the journey because they're not quite sure what to do or how to do it right or how to do it perfect. You want to change your body? Get yourself moving. Don't wait for the perfect trainer. Just go out there and move. Put on your shoes and move and get momentum. I'm going to turn this situation around. I'm not going to sit back and, and moan and cry over what happened and what went wrong and who did what. I'm going to do something about this situation. The other thing is take full responsibility for your life. Accept where you are and the responsibility that you're going to take yourself where you want to go. Someone said we have two primary choices in life. We can either accept conditions as they exist or we can take the responsibility to change them. See, a lot of people want to exempt themselves from taking responsibility. All they want to do is talk about the problem. Every time you see them, they'll tell you their story over and over and over and over again. No, no. You want to take responsibility for your life. I got me here, I can get me out of this. And I'm getting out. I'm not going to be a volunteer victim. And so all you're looking for are new breakthroughs through practice and practice and practice. You'll get better and better and better. And there's still some things that will happen to you that will catch you on the blind side that you did not anticipate. You'll get knocked down, but you won't be knocked out. And so I say to you, it's possible you can live your dream if it's becoming a diamond, if it's having more, it's achieving more, it's being a better father, being a better mother, whatever it is, overcoming addiction, changing our society. It's possible you can live your dream. It's necessary that you have a plan of action, that you're resilient, that you stick to, and you work with the system, that you work with people, that you give support, and that you be there for them, that you have the vision and never give it up, that you become creative and relentless and keep on coming back back again and again and again and that it's you that you got to take personal responsibility to make it happen and that it's hard easy is not an option and when life knocked you down jump back up and said it's not over until i win forget about your past and make the rest of your life the best of your life launch it Got a date with destiny. My heart says yeah, but can't convince the rest of me. I tried so hard to make it with no recipe. My selfish ways caught up and got the best of me. I need redemption, no need to mention my past. Cause all that matters now is bigger than diamonds and cash. The glitz, the glamour, the lights, the camera, the action. It stays the fans, the speakers blasting. You know I want it, I need it. Don't doubt it, I can't live without it. This is everything I've dreamed of. It's everything I've ever wanted. But is it really truly in my plans? Put the guy mix up my blueprints. Darwinian natural selection has put together on this planet, and I would conjecture on rather a lot of other planets as well, something utterly extraordinary. You're here right now at this moment because tomorrow you want to be somebody greater than the person you are today. You see yourself succeeding, you have a vision, 
You have a dream. Congratulations. You're already 10 steps ahead of 95% of the world. So I want to share one thing with you. It's going to move you closer to your dreams. But before I begin, I want to explain the biggest myth that most people think leads them to success. And here's the myth. You might believe if you're scared to fail, you won't fail. Lies. Biggest myth ever. And I believed it. You see, I always thought that being scared to fail in life would literally keep me from failing. I would look at the losers around me and I would say, sheesh, I never want to turn out like him. I really believe this train of thought would help me succeed. Until one day, I was walking down the street and I saw an old man. Had a hat, suspenders, and a cane. Was about 80 years old. This old man was barely walking. He could walk, but the cane helped a lot. He was struggling. So anyway, he was walking across the street and he ended up falling. So I went over to go help him. And he gets up, says thank you, and we introduce ourselves. Had a little conversation. Told me his name and I told him mine. His name was Robert, by the way. And right as he walked away, I told him, this is what I said. Robert, you should stay inside where it's safe, my friend. And Robert turns around and says to me, I love walking. And I love walking way more than I'm afraid of falling. So I ask him, well, what about your safety? Don't you want to live? And he told me this. These are the exact words he said. He said this. Solo, living means doing what you love to do. And if I had to fall here and there to do what I want to do in life, then so be it. And he just walked away. Never saw him again. That was it. But that statement really had me thinking. And it had me thinking hard because I learned something that day. That's when I realized the true key to success. You see, I always thought if I could just fear the act of failing, and if I fear it like crazy, I will succeed. Because I thought the fear would magically motivate me to get out there and start taking action. But after that day, uh -uh, I realized something. I realized it's the love for success that will lead me to succeeding. So just imagine if Robert feared falling. Would he even start walking? Of course not. He wouldn't even do what he loved to do. He would sit at home and take no type of action. But he loved walking. Wasn't even scared to fall. It gave him life. That's what allowed him to get up and do it. He loved walking so much he was willing to fall 10 times a day just to do it. And you have to be the same. You have to love success just as much because that's what's going to allow you to get up and go for it. Being scared to fail won't do anything. In fact, when you love success and you start going for it, guess what happens? You're going to fail. You're going to fail 10 times, 100 times, maybe even a 1,000 times. But that's okay. Failure isn't permanent. Falling isn't permanent. You get right back up and keep going. And this time, you're going to be stronger, wiser, and you'll be more driven than ever. And for every 10 failures, you'll land one success. You have to love success so much that you're willing to fail 10 times before you can succeed once. That's how a winner does it. Imagine if Michael Jordan was scared of missing. He would have never taken a shot. Imagine if Steve Jobs was afraid of people not liking his product. There would be no iPhone. So ask yourself this. Do you want to be a person who fears failure? Or do you want to be a person who loves success? Which one? Because you're going to have to pick today. And I'll tell you one thing. One is a failure and one is a success. 
And if you love success, there is nothing that can stop you. All those negative things people say will mean nothing. They're going to talk about how only 1% make it to the top. Big deal. Want to know something else? Only 1% stick with that fitness program long enough to see results. Only 1% of nerds stick with that video game long enough to get good at it. Only 1% of relationships stick it out to the end. That doesn't mean you have a 1% chance. It just means you can't behave like the 99%. You'll have to do something better than giving up a month from now. Those are just numbers. You want to talk about numbers? Take a look around you and take a good look around you. Are you like 99% of the people around you? If you are, then you're in the wrong video, my friend. This isn't for the 99%. This is for the 1% of people who are willing to take risks, who are willing to stay committed, who are willing to go out there and die for what they believe in. Because you know what? The 99%, they aren't willing to do that. They want perfection. They want safety. And whoever isn't there with them, they will try and knock you down every step of the way and get you back into safety with them. But you have a bigger vision. You aren't willing to settle. Not this time. This time, you're going for the promised land, baby. So the next time someone tells you, you're gonna fail. You know what you tell them? Tell them they're right. But you're not afraid to fail. You're not afraid to take action. You're not afraid to jump. You're gonna fail 10 times, but you know what? It's cool. Because on the 11th time, you'll succeed. <laughs> oh, you'll succeed all right. And it'll feel good. And while you're over here living the life of your dreams and complete happiness, guess where they're going to be? That's right. They'll be failures, the real failures, over there where it's safe, scared to fail. Ironic, isn't it? So I want to ask you a question. What are your fears? What are you afraid of? What are you scared of? Because we all have fears, don't we? We all have something that's blocking us, that's holding us back. You can either live your dreams or live your fears. And I think the majority of people actually are not living their dreams, but are living their fears. Your time is limited, so don't waste it living someone else's life. Don't be trapped by dogma, which is living with the results of other people's thinking. Don't let the noise of others' opinions drown out your own inner voice. And most important, have the courage to follow your heart and intuition. They somehow already know what you truly want to become. Everything else is secondary. And the majority of the fears that we have are not life or death fears. They're not those kind of fears. But through our imagination, we blow them out of proportion and we give them more power than they actually have or deserve and we permit them to govern our lives. We permit them to determine how far we can stretch out on our dreams and discovering our stuff. See now if you go through life being afraid, people can sense that. They can pick up that fear. Remembering that you are going to die is the best way I know to avoid the trap of thinking you have something to lose. You are already naked. There is no reason not to follow your heart. What would your life be like 
as you look toward the future, if you decide it, I'm not going to allow my peers to stop me. What would your life be like? When you begin to, to look at your life, you can decide to, to use fear as a blocker or you can decide to use it as building blocks. I want you to focus on your dreams. I want you to focus on your goals. I want you to focus on your solutions. Like I want you to focus on uh, that dream life that you have. Will it be easy to just run out there and do it? No. Will it happen overnight? No. Will it be a struggle? Yes. Will there be times when you can't make ends meet? Yes, that's a part of it. Will there be times you won't know what to do? Yes, that's a part of it. What is it that will give you the drive? What is it that will ignite the courage in you to get up and come back again and again and again? Your why? Your why is going to push you when you can't push yourself. When you want to quit and give up, your why is going to give you that edge you need, that advantage you need, that, that lift that you need to get to the next level. Your why? Yes, we're tired. Yes, we're hungry. Yes, the mind is saying give up. Yes, it's saying quit. But we cannot quit because we realize we have not reached the goal yet. We get one opportunity in life. One chance in life to do whatever you're going to do, to lay your foundation, to make whatever mark you're going to make, whatever legacy you're going to leave, leave your legacy. Look at what's around you. Look at the dudes that you see around you. Is that what you want to become? Is that what you want to look like? And if it is, copy what they do. <laughs> copy what they fucking do. Most people's lives in general, you really got to process this, are going to be garbage. You really got to process this. And that's what happened to the majority of the people that I saw. Almost everybody that I grew up with became a failure. Almost everybody. No, but it's the goddamn truth, right? I mean, it's the goddamn truth. Like, and you slowly get lulled into it. You have a, people don't realize you have all this energy in your 20s and it goes away. Most of the people, by the way, that I worked with, this is a human thing. Most guys that I work with in my mid 20s that had big dreams are all working shitty ass jobs and they look like they've had their face grounded in the dirt 10 years later. That's most people. People say that they want truth. It's mostly bullshit. People mostly just want to be happy or not even as good as that. People mostly just want to alleviate negative emotions. Most people are just in coping. They're not in thriving. They're not trying to thrive. They're trying to cope. They're like, I want to know the truth of this. No, you don't. You just want to eliminate inconvenience and fucking bullshit out of your life so you can just cope and just boost through life and die. A lot of people, they can't even process that without their brains fucking crying. How do you build your life really fucking good? You've got to build yourself true north principles. Who are you? What are you trying to get out of life? Where are you going in life? What do you want out of life? Most guys completely lack this and they're on somebody else's plan. It's brutal. This is fucking brutal. So guys get very bitter about the things that I'm just talking about. They're super bitter about it. But what I would ask you is why? Why are you bitter? Are you bitter that you can't just keep being a purposeless, no direction little bitch? Does that bother you? You can't just be mediocre, bug you. So you want to think of yourself as an entity that has direction, good emotions, good people around you. What does that mean? A few different things. One is you've got to know who you are. Like who am I as a person? What am I doing here? To find that true north principle in yourself, of what you're trying to get out of life. You've got to be somebody who knows what they want out of life. From there, boundaries. In other words, you don't take bullshit, you have low tolerance for bullshit, you have a spine. Most of you in this room will never do it. You're full of shit. Most of you will never do it. 
reason why human beings have success barriers. People have success barriers out the fucking ass. Okay? They're always like, I'll do it later. This is a very common thing people will say. I'll do it later. I'll do it later. I'll do it later. I'll do it later. You know, and why? Because they're busy with their lives and they've got stuff going on. People in general just get stuck in this weird autopilot rut where they're just doing the same shit again and again. It's because people always say they'll do it later. I'll do it later. I'll do it later. It's going to happen later. And they really believe it. And it will never happen. It'll never happen. Focus on being a winner. And what I would recommend to you is try to pick something that builds the structure that you want. So this was really a speech about building a structure, okay? It's about building something where you as a man are growing and increasing in your power. So again, final conclusion. As a man, a lot of bullshit out there. Assume failure unless you fight against it. Law of entropy, baby. Gotta fight against it. Work to create structures. Unplug from what you're being told. Fuck what you're being told. Fuck what RxD is telling you. Fuck what society is telling you. You gotta look at this shit with your own critical judgment. How much energy do you have? How much of a sex drive do you have? What do you want out of life? What kind of life are you trying to build? What, where are you going with all this shit? And then start experimenting with different structures now while you're young. Try them out. Cold approach pickup is a major cornerstone of that. And then build it up and you can create a life of your own design. You can be a man in your prime and you can become one of those rare men who actually is beating with energy and good shit and having a great life well into your old age. You can't connect the dots looking forward. You can only connect them looking backwards. So you have to trust that the dots will somehow connect in your future. You have to trust in something. Your gut, destiny, life, karma, whatever. Because believing that the dots will connect down the road will give you the confidence to follow your heart even when it leads you off the well-worn path. And that will make all the difference. Your time is limited, so don't waste it living someone else's life. Don't be trapped by dogma, which is living with the results of other people's thinking. Don't let the noise of others' opinions drown out your own inner voice. You've got to find what you love, and that is as true for work as it is for your lovers. Your work is going to fill a large part of your life, and the only way to be truly satisfied is to do what you believe is great work. And the only way to do great work is to love what you do. If you haven't found it yet, keep looking and don't settle. Have the courage to follow your heart and intuition. They somehow already know what you truly want to become. But you're going to have some ups and you're going to have some downs. Most people give up on themselves easily. You know the human spirit is powerful. There's nothing as powerful. It's hard to kill the human spirit. Anybody can feel good when they have their health, their bills are paid, they have happy relationships. Anybody can be positive then. Anybody can have a larger vision then. Anybody can have faith under those kinds of circumstances. The real challenge of growth, mentally, emotionally, and spiritually, comes when you get knocked down. It takes courage to act. Part of being hungry when you've been defeated, it takes courage to start over again. Fear kills dreams. Fear kills hope. Fear put people in the hospital. Fear can age you, can hold you back from doing something that you know within yourself that you're capable of doing, but it will paralyze you. At the end of your feelings is nothing, but at the end of every principle is a promise. Behind your little feelings, it might not be absolutely nothing at the end of your little feelings, but behind every principle is a promise. And some of you in your life, the reason why you're not at your goal right now, because you just all about your feelings. 
You, you all on your feelings. You don't feel like waking up. So who does? Every day you say no to your dreams, you might be pushing your dreams back a whole six months, a whole year. That one single day, that one day you didn't get up could have pushed your stuff back I don't know how long. Don't allow your emotions to control you. We are emotional, but you want to begin to discipline your emotion. If you don't discipline and contain your emotions, they will use you. You want it, and you're going to go all out to have it. It's not going to be easy when you want to change. It's not easy. If it were in fact easy, everybody would do it. But if you're serious, you'll go all out. I'm in control here. I'm not going to let this get me down. I'm not going to let this destroy me. I'm coming back. And I'll be stronger and better because of it. You have got to make a declaration that this is what you stand for. You're standing up for your dreams. You're standing up for peace of mind. You're standing up for health. Take full responsibility for your life. Accept where you are and the responsibility that you're going to take yourself where you want to go. You can decide that I'm going to live each day as if it were my last. Live your life with passion. With some drive. Decide that you're going to push yourself. The last chapter to your life has not been written yet. And it doesn't matter about what happened yesterday. It doesn't matter about what happens to you. What matters is, what are you going to do about it? This year I will make this goal become a reality. I won't talk about it anymore. I can. I can. I can. How easy and how convenient is it for us to blame everything and everybody for the things that we have going on in our lives? There is a such thing as you being a positive and a great person with the best of intentions towards everybody and shit is rough and you just can't get a break. But most of you, most of you are waking up every day looking for pain, dysfunction, drama, unemployment, being broke, struggling, dropping every excuse in the book about your childhood and the problems and dysfunction that you grew up in that's stopping you from becoming successful. You don't like your friends, so why are you still fucking with them? You don't trust your managers, agents, and lawyers, so why are they still there? Do you really expect your life and career to be any different from messing with the same things, people, and situations. That's all I'm saying. Stop being a lazy, bum-ass person that's full of excuses, sitting around on the pity potty, coming up with every excuse in the world as to why you ain't winning. You are the reason you're not winning. You keep messing with negative, evil and dysfunctional people and expecting positive results. It's time you get off the pity potty, stop complaining about being out of shape when you never go to the gym. Stop looking at your stomach when you get out of the shower and your body and complaining about the way you look when you're eating everything in sight and never going to the gym. You are the reason you look the way you look, you are the reason you're unemployed. You are the reason why your surroundings are so dysfunctional and negative. You could still be in the hood, broken, fucked up, and living a peaceful life. It's a choice. We are being raised in a generation of people that come up with every excuse in the book as to why they are not winning. You have every excuse in the, reason, in the book why you're not spending time with your kids. Fathers, I'm talking to you. Because you're able to create a child doesn't mean that you're a father. It doesn't mean that you understand the concept of fatherhood. 
It's time to stop coming up with excuses why five, six, seven months, and even years have went by without you seeing your child. It's wrong, and it's only the kids that are suffering in the end. Excuses sound best to the people that's making them up. You got every excuse in the world. That's why your shit ain't moving. That's why ain't nothing change and nothing will change. Because you have convinced yourself that everything is wrong, everything is, neg is negative, and nothing will change. And guess what? It won't change. Change your mind and it will change your life. Change if nothing around you changes, change the things that are around you. I'm tired of it. I'm frustrated with the amount of people that are not successful because they have thought their way into a depression. You have thought your way into negativity and misery. You have thought your way into holding on to a dude or a girl that you broke up with a year or two ago and you're still sad and miserable they didn't moved on with their life it's all in the mind change your mind and it will change your life you just have to you just have to wake up you just have to break that negative spirit you have to break through all of that shit that you're carrying I don't want to, I don't feel sorry for you. You feel sorry for yourself. That's the problem. Even when positive people are trying to give you all this good energy, you have tricked your mind to turn every positive thing that they say into something negative. Every time they say anything to try and motivate you and inspire you, you, you turn every negative thought and every, you turn every positive thought every positive intention everything that they trying to to boost your spirits up you flip it shake it manipulate it and you have you are so determined to be negative and miserable it's unbelievable but it's a new day it's a new day My message isn't to tear you down and contribute to your negativity. My intention is to just say, enough is enough. God isn't done with you. God is not done with you. That's why you're still here. But I actually have a problem with the fact that there are people out here that could be more successful, but you have fought your way into a depression. You have fought your way into gravitating and moving into the direction of anything and anybody that's negative. Everything about your life that you've decided that you've wanted for yourself is so negative, but yet you're, you're expecting to produce positive results. It's not gonna happen, people. The outcome of your life and your career is based on the choices that you've made. I love you. I'm asking that you get off the pity potty and stop feeling sorry for yourself. For every level, there's another devil. For every level, there's another devil. Get off the pity potty. It's your season. It's your moment. Right now. question is, are you just going to look at this video and decide, wow, that was some powerful shit, and do the same fucking thing? The question is, are you happy? And if you're not happy, what's holding you back? What, what, what do you think that's the source of your lack of happiness? What is it that you think, if we're to change, it will make things different for you, that you would be happy? What's the purpose of your life? 
We gotta look at what makes you really do what you do. You need to find something that's eternal inside of yourself. That no matter what changes on the surface, this part of you does not change. It's the part you come back to, the part that guides you, the part that really makes you fulfilled. Most of us in life are so afraid something's going to happen that we can't control, therefore we're going to get pain, that we try to avoid those things we can't control. We try to shape our lives, where we spend our time, who we spend our time with, what we do by environments that we feel really comfortable in, where we feel like we're really in control in them. But what that does is it limits the shape and quality of our lives. You know, so many times we set goals or we have dreams or we have plans and we work our tail off and it doesn't come out the way we want. And a lot of people come out of those situations disillusioned or angry or resentful or frustrated. They look for someone to blame. But you know, sometimes I really truly believe that not getting your goal is part of the design causing you to dig inside and discover more of yourself, to really begin to use your real capacity as a human being, those traits that are within you that only expand when they're challenged. How do you live in a world where suddenly something can happen, it could take away your whole business, or you know, a storm could come and take away your home, or, or some calamity could happen to your personal family, or a disease could hit, or, or someone could die? How do you deal with all that? And the answer is, you have to know the one thing you can control is not events. What you control is what things mean to you. How much time you really waste? For real. How much of our brains are we really going to use? So I don't care if you're a, you're a star athlete, I don't care if you're a billionaire, I don't care if you're a CEO of one of the most important companies, I don't care if you're an entertainer, like I don't care who you are. We all have problems. Stop letting the problems consume you. Problems are a part of life. There are two types of people in the world. I'll tell you exactly who they are. You have people on one side who have reasons. They'll tell you all the fucking reasons why they can't become successful, why they can't get what they want in life. The question is, what are you going to do with your time? What drives you? I want you to focus on your dreams. Nobody ain't got to convince me of what I do. I want you to focus on your goals. I do what I do because I do what I do. I want you to focus on your solutions because I'm built from something and man didn't create it. I want you to focus on that dream life that you have. If you put as much time into working on winning as you put into thinking about losing, you already be a champion. This is what I believe, and I'm willing to die for it, period. This is what you love. This is your passion. Step back. Don't judge it. If you judge it, judge not yet, unless you be judged. Why? Because when you judge it, you invest emotion in it, and that mo emotion could be anger. And guess what? That hurts you. That doesn't hurt anybody else. Earn the most you possibly can. Be the most you possibly can. And here's why. The essence of life is growth. The essence of life is growth to do the best you can. And here's what's interesting. Humans are the only life form that will do less than they possibly can. I'd rather lose out on my dream doing the right thing than the cheat trying to make a shortcut to get to my goal. My best advice for you is to choose the all. Earn all you can, make all the friends you can, read as many books as you can, develop as many skills as you can, see as much as possible, do as much as possible, make as much fortune as possible, give as much of it away as possible. The max, there's no life like it. I'm telling you, once I got on track, I've never looked back. How much time do you spend working on you? How much time do you spend every day working on your dream? In the last 90 days, how many books have you read? In the last year, what new skill or knowledge have you acquired? What kind of investment have you made in you? 
So I'm saying that as you begin to look at where you want to go, if you want to make it today, and things are changing so fast, you have to literally run to stand still. I'm saying that you've got to make some conscious effort to begin to work to develop you. Here's something else. Most people are not living their dreams because of fear, ladies and gentlemen. Fear, limited vision, and lack of self-esteem is what keep most people doing things they don't want to do. How easy is it to get up in the morning when you know you're not doing all that it takes? It's not very easy at all. You can just lay there awake thinking, oh, what's a few more minutes in bed? It won't matter much anyway. Wrong. It does matter. It will matter. Now, how easy is it to get up in the morning when you're pouring it on, doing the best you can, anxious to get going, make progress toward your dreams? It's a whole different story. When you're resting to renew your reserves, it's much different than resting to avoid your day. When you're psyched up and excited for your life, when you're excited for what you plan to accomplish for the day, it's amazing you'll wake up before the alarm clock even tries to startle you away. Your successes fuel your ambition. Your successes give you extra energy. Your successes pave the way for more successes. It's the snowball effect. With one success, you're excited to meet another, and another, and another. And pretty soon, the disciplines that were so difficult in the beginning, the disciplines that got you going, are now part of your philosophy.